welcome to Talks at Google. My name is Mary Elizabeth Allman, F-O-I-M-E, my initials for short. I am so excited for our talk at Google today. We are hosting two of the wonderful members of the cast of Outer Banks um, on Netflix. I would love to introduce you guys to Madison Daly and Rudy Penko. Okay, so Rudy is coming at us from Alaska, which is where you grew up, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, I did grow up here. Cool, and Madison, you are where during this quarantine? I'm in LA currently. Nice. Okay. Um, so I have to ask this question because I feel like uh, it, it is like the question of quarantine. Like, what have you found to occupy yourselves during this time? Are you, did you like find a new creative outlet or learn a new skill or what are you guys um, doing to keep busy? Cooking. We've been cooking. At least I've been cooking. Uh, I've been really whipping up my new salmon dish that I've been trying to perfect. Really isn't that hard, but. Yeah, you take some nice fresh salmon, put it in the oven for about it's only like fifteen to twelve minutes, twelve to fifteen minutes, and then uh, oh yeah, put a little seasoning on there, and then make some rice. Yeah, I'm I'm going all out on the cooking. So that's I'm coming to your house for dinner. That sounds lovely. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be there in a few hours. <laughs> that is right. about you. Oh, uh, I think well with the show coming out, I've been pretty busy with like stuff like this. Yeah, um, yeah. So I've been staying creative via interviews and talking about things and, you know. But other than that, yeah, cooking, been hanging out with friends, like the same friends. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, listen, <laughs> self-isolating, being completely 100% alone. I. You're, are you an extrovert? Is that a little too much for you? I'm a raging extrovert. Okay, so quarantine, not easy for Madison. <laughs> um, okay, so I want to get started with some fun, like super random questions. So these are like rapid fire, don't think about your answer. Yeah. Are you ready? Sure. Yeah. Ice, cubed or crushed? Crushed. Cru uh, crushed. Actually, it depends on what drink. <laughs> oh, okay, can we have a little bit of clarity into that? Uh, water, cubed. Uh, margarita crushed. <laughs> okay, that's fair. All right. I, I, I get behind that. Yeah. Okay, sweets. Chocolate or fruity? Fruity. Fruity. Oh, okay. We got some fruity people. What is the most embarrassing thing you've ever worn in your life? Uh, nothing. <laughs> uh, um, I'd say... Uh, outfit. Did you have a bad outfit as a kid once? All I can think about is everything that I used to buy from Rue 21 that was like graphic tees. Oh, no, they were great. I like the I, – what are you telling me? I wear those today. <laughs> I love graphic tees. Oh, okay. But specifically the ones I owned with like zebra print, like L-M-F-A-O. I remember I had one of those. That was yeah. not yeah. my prime. That's pretty, that's pretty bad. Uh, onesies. <laughs> onesies. Um, but do you still wear onesies, Rudy? Now, here's the thing, though. I love onesies. Now, other people would be like, that's embarrassing. I'm like, I'm down for it. I, I feel that. I like that. It's only embarrassing if you feel embarrassed. If you're not, if you own it, then it is what it is. That's great. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. Um, if you could do anything besides acting, what would you want to do? Oof. Uh, something ridiculous like wingsuiting, like wingsuiting or like skydiving for a career. I mean, I've always been a kid that has always like loved athletics, so soccer was my dream uh, for as you know, till since I was a teeny bopper until I probably was about a sophomore in high school of like you're probably not gonna be a soccer player, Rudy. So um, yeah. All right. Um, a singer or a makeup artist? I Ooh. really like. I'd be a makeup artist. Okay. Okay. I love that. I must be a good artist. I have a theory that like. Really good makeup artists are also really good artists in real life. I just suppose it makes sense since I'm an artist. No, no, I'm I'm going the wrong direction I, with that. <laughs> I can't draw a single thing to save my life. <laughs> right. Okay, so you can do some good makeup. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, last one. Off the top of your mind, what was the last thing you Googled? Top of my mind? Uh holy crap. Uh I think it was. What was it? <laughs> what was the last thing I Googled? No recollection. 
I want to say it was an island uh, here in Alaska that I Googled to find out if I can go to it. I think it's called, I think it's called Ham Island. And I Googled it to see if it's like one of those islands that is like off the you know, it's like governmental. Alone. So that was, I know that's kind of random, but that's what I think I Googled. All right. No, I mean, that's the point, right? We tell Google everything. Yeah. What about you, Madison? Um, I think the last thing I was Googling is like flights. So I was like, Google flights. <laughs> and I'm like looking at when I can go back to East Coast. I'm pretty sure it's the last thing I Googled. Mm. All right. Well, East Coast action. Because you're you're from North Carolina, yeah? Yeah. Okay. And were you, were, have you been in LA this whole time? Were you guys, have you guys both been where you are at now the whole time of quarantine? Or? So I just had to check and I'm, I'm lying. The last thing I Googled was, uh, uh, a camcorder, uh, a DTR VX 1000. That's what I left Google. Yeah. All right, <laughs> on eBay. <laughs> That's what you're on the hunt for next. Yeah, you know, I'm really gonna shoot a film with that thing. Which I'm gonna do. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, okay, cool. Well, let's talk a little bit more about like the, the entertainment life that you guys are living. Um, can you guys have both? given a lot of interviews on how you got your start in the business. Um, tell me a little bit though about what you have found most interesting or most surprising about being part of this industry as you've kind of grown in your career. I think, you can go, boo. Yeah, I think the most surprising thing that I've found is like how many like-minded people there are because I spent like a good chunk of my life having no community and having nobody that thought like me or processed things like me to then get into this industry. And everyone's like, no, I feel very similar about a lot of things. And so that was a very surprising thing to me. Kind of like like-minded people who love the same things as you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I love that. What about you, Rudy? Um, Something interesting about this industry that I have felt was that it's like you have a new responsibility. Um, and putting that responsibility on your shoulders of like educating yourself because there will be people that will look up to you. Um, and I kind of knew that it was gonna get there at some point, but since I'm going through it now, now I know what it feels like to like educate myself so I can educate others. So that responsibility. Interesting. What do you, can you give me a little bit of an example? What do you mean by educate? Well, right now with Black Lives Matter and how we have to continue doing uh, and pushing that movement continuously in our everyday life uh, for, for life now, uh, which is great. You need to educate why uh, and you need to put in perspective to, I mean, I'm just talking as a white person that you need to listen and really see it from a perspective of, of it's not your job. It's not us needing to lead this. It, it isn't. We have to support and then we support African-American people and let them show us that like we, we do not allow other white people to take credit that or anything that are like, this is uh, because of uh, us or anything like that. That is, that's not the point. And there's so much that you have to educate yourself before you can take part. So kind of like using your platform in a really thoughtful way to yeah. to help accomplish things that are important to you and important to the world, yeah? Mm -hmm. Love that. Wow, that was both really good answers, you guys. Not, I don't know what I was expecting, but <laughs> I love that. Um, okay, so I wanna talk to you guys a little bit about technology. We are a technology company, so you probably saw it coming. You guys were, or both have kind of grown up in a world totally full of technology. And mm -hmm. one thing that I found super interesting about the show um, is that like right at the beginning, there is a massive hurricane that basically knocks out all the power and the cell phone towers and everything. So your characters operate essentially without technology, like almost the entire time. Yeah. So I'm really curious from your perspective, having always, probably almost always had a phone or some kind of connection, what was that like for you? playing a character who like really didn't have access to that. Go for this. Oh, um, I thought it was, 
I thought it um, was a unique perspective because um, you kind of see all of our characters. I mean, even if our characters did have service, I don't think you would have seen any of us really on our phone a bunch. Um, just being outside, it's like I'm from North Carolina. I can't remember a time as a kid that I was inside doing really anything. It's like you're outside doing something outdoorsy, something fun. And so I think that was a cool thing to show. But also, I'm not like anti cell phone. So kind of important in this day and age, especially when we're all, to your point, quarantined and some of us are extroverts and like need that connection. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, like, my I didn't get a phone, like an actual phone. I'm not just talking an iPhone until I was a freshman in high school. Um, and because my parents thought they were like, they were, they were too much of a connection to everybody else and that you would get distracted with everybody else trying to, you know, contact you. And I was like, well, don't you want to contact me? And they're like, well, we know where you usually are. And so that was their reasoning. And then when I got a phone, um, there was this wave of like connectivity that I was like, and it wasn't an iPhone. I promise you that it was like one of the the flip ones that go up, you know? Yeah. 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 Those ones. Um, and then I understood why, um, or at least actually, no, I don't think I would say then I say now I understand why they did what they did. Um, <clears throat> and like you said, it's, it's this certain constant, connection to everything in the world with these things um and like i said there's a responsibility to owning this thing now um and uh everything that's going on in the world it's because you're aware of it right uh, um i'm kind of getting off topic but it was <laughs> it was a little strange for uh going to a set where almost i think phones were gonna be like not allowed on set uh which was like, all right, well, we don't need to put a rule on there, but like, you know, I, I really don't think it would have been completely, it would, it, we actually don't, don't think if Bailey and I thought it was weird at all. All right, cool. Um, I'm curious, do you think that if, Madison, you kind of alluded to this already, so maybe Rudy, do you think that the storyline would have been any different if there had been technology involved? Yeah, I think it would have been, I think. <laughs> Well, there probably were some inst instances where, like, if we had phones, that would have been, like, all right, so much easier to get stuff done. Uh, like, we could have Googled the lighthouse and, just, like, how long has the lighthouse been there and where is it? Um, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely some stuff I think technology would have solved for Outer Banks, for sure. Uh, it would have been so much less fun. Yeah. Like, if you want to live an adventurous life, Chuck this thing in the ocean and then see what happens. You know, I feel like that's 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 a solution right there. All right, chuck the phone in the ocean. I don't, I don't mind. I like that idea. <laughs> um, so speaking of technology and um, Madison, you and I were kind of talking about this a little bit before, but how has your use of technology kind of changed during this quarantine time? I know you're probably using it more, but are you using it differently than you used to? Do you feel? Um, yeah, and I don't know if it's, I feel like there are a lot of factors involved. Um, me just now gaining this platform, <laughs> that's one thing. So I'm definitely using my social media very differently. Um, mm -hmm. With everything going on in the world, I'm navigating it in a very different way. Um, and also being quarantined, so I have a lot more time to dedicate to being on my phone and using social media as a voice and using it in that way. So I feel like right now I've kind of been using my phone to either schedule a meeting or for activism. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, That's I mean, I. Kind of like one in, it's like a, it was like a one, like two birds with one stone thing. Cause it was like quarantine and then also so release like the perfect storm of like opportunity for changing the way that you use your, your online presence. What about you? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, kind of like getting slammed with the fact of like, figure it out, you know, you know, like, gosh, dang it. And, um, um, really, 
like I said, and I keep bringing this up, educating how it works and what it means. And um, that's been the biggest thing has just been like, all right, here's your platform. Here's this transition that you have to go through. You navigate it. And it's been, it's been, I think we've been doing a great job as a cast and as individuals as well of just finding out what we're passionate about and what we want to educate ourselves with. And, and um, <clears throat> also talking as it like we, as we have a bunch of group chats that we're like texting and like, Hey, we, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we come together on of like, we saw this on the internet and like, we should do something um, and stuff oh, like that. And um, yeah, I'd say that was, that's been. That's, that's really been. cool that you guys are like kind of forming your own little, it's almost like a little task force behind the scenes. And yeah. something else I think that's so cool with the, with like, I think your, your show is cool because I think it spans almost generations, right? There's people who grew up with like the OC who are seeing this as like the, the OC of 2020. And then you have such, sort of this new younger Gen Z who is like just absolutely idolizing you guys. And so I think watching how you guys are spending your time and where you're putting your energy is gonna be so important for these kids because they're gonna wanna be like you. So I think that's like just such a cool thing that you guys have such a good handle on how much impact you can have um, and are so thoughtful about it. That's really, really neat. Um, and actually kind of brings me right into like the next thing I was curious about. And um, aside from, you know, it, having this new platform um, that you guys are using so responsibly, what's I found really interesting about the show is that although you guys filmed it like a year over a year ago ish before it released anyway, um, there's so many themes that are actually kind of echoed in sort of what's going on today. So I was curious, do you guys find that interesting or like, has that come up in conversation at all for you guys? How sort of, I don't know if it's like art reflecting life or life reflecting art in this way, but I was just curious um, your thoughts on that. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to know which theme you're, you're the I mean, I, so I'm curious. Which I, got a whole, I got a whole list. I think like there's so, um, there's like the socioeconomic inequality angle, sort of like the, not trusting authority angle um and then just some of the stuff around um sort of like uh like <laughs> around uh, some of the language that's used to describe women during the show things like that and all of those things all three of those things plus i won't go into more but i think it's really interesting that it's, it's almost like some of them existed before but how much um Tr not trusting authority or like the police force, for example, there's like multiple scenes where, yeah. you know, your character JJ is like, you should never trust the police like that. It's just interesting um, how much reflection um, and relevance that stuff kind of has. And mm. it was filmed all before and written all before what's going on now. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I thought that was, I mean, there's the division of class uh, that I saw, like that was the one I was like, yep, there it is. Uh, but then also the, the police uh, and being like, you know, even if you're doing something that isn't, you know, technically illegal or, or you're doing something that is quote unquote, uh, what's the, I say, pogue life, like doing something pogue life ish. And that's the, who, who's going to catch you is the police, um, you know, and always running from them. It, it is a, I think it just kind of what writers see is that this has been something that everybody's been struggling with for a long time, you know, like a long time. And uh, that's what they put in the show. And I think it's, it, I think it, it's been in a bunch of other shows. It's been in a bunch of other things. Um, and I think uh, just with the fact that <clears throat> what's going on in 2020 just amplifies those shows and those. Um, yeah you know, issues that are in TV because of the fact that right people acknowledge them. Um, Haley, what do you want to say? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it coming up now and having relevance now is like, I mean, unfortunately the police issue and the social divide is consistently relevant. Yep. Um, like, but you, I'm happy that the show touched touches on those topics and you can see it in the way of like 
we already know not to trust the cops. Like we already associate them with being not safe people to mm-hmm. go to. And when John V's in trouble and you have this rich white man ward who has so much power that we know like going to the police is useless. Like they're not going to believe what actually happened. They're only going to believe what benefits them and people in the community that they trust because they're funding half the town and things like that. And I don't, I don't think it's any surprise that it's relevant now. I don't think it's the last time it's going to be like, yeah, remember, you know, it's just like kind of persistent in that way. And I hope that our show only continues to spark that conversation and keep that conversation going and maybe even dive a little bit more in depth, like due to everything happening right now and everybody Mm -hmm. to learn now more than ever. I hope that, you know, our, our show runners and creators aren't scared to go there, you know? Well, I think to your point, this is not, it's not a new issue. And I would give the writers kudos for writing it into the show. I mean, and bringing it to light. It, yes, it's now exploded, and I think it, it's even more relevant. But I, I love that they are, they almost kind of have already gone there, and I love that you know they might be thinking about taking it even further. I think it's such to your point, such an important thing, and it's not going to go away. I think it's consistently relevant is a really good way of putting it. Um, Okay, so I want to speak to our, our viewers really quick. Um, I have a couple more questions for Madison and Rudy, and then we're actually going to take questions from the audience. So you can submit your questions via chat at any time, um, and feel free to, even while we're talking now, um, we'll be able to put them up on the screen in a bit, and then we can kind of answer some audience questions, which will be fun. Um, to wrap up, I have some a couple individual questions for each of you guys. So Madison, I'll start with you. Um, So I watched an earlier interview um, of you where you had talked about how playing Kiara has made you a better person. And I was curious to know um, how you think, like, what what do you mean by that? How has she changed you? I just think she made me a chiller person, you know, like, I feel what I learned from her just to care a little bit less, which I already in and of myself don't care about the rules and care about what's expected of me very much but I feel like it pushed that even further to even on a physical level of to like care like a little bit less of like what's going on and not feeling like I need to be like so put together and I feel like there are parts of Madison that created Kiara obviously and you know I'm thankful that like I got to bring myself to that character and show that like strength of like, screw the rules, do what you want to do, do what you're passionate about doing, do what you feel connected to. Mm -hmm. And I think the exciting part about all that is that my fans get to see that and my fans get to learn from that too. You know, it's not just me learning from that character. It's also a bunch of people being like, Oh, it's actually really cool to not care what other people think. <laughs> it's, it's a lot easier. I mean, it's less tiring for sure. Significantly. <laughs> and you kind of took the words right out of my right out of my mouth. Like one of one of my absolute favorite things about Kiara as a character is like she just like holds her own. Like it doesn't matter that like she's the only female in this group of like pretty hard hitting, like very opinionated guys. She's just like super strong, super confident, and she just owns that about herself. Um, and a, a lot of times, like in some of the interviews I've watched, like there's just, there's a lot of conversation around like Kiara in a romantic light. Um, but I'm curious to know from you, it sounds like you got to bring a little bit to the character. Like, did you discuss with the writers at all? Sort of like, where does, where does she draw that strength from? Um, like a Madison. I, th- <laughs> <laughs> I feel like she kind of finds her strength in the same kind of way I did. Um, I feel like I found a lot of my strength in shedding those expectations of me because I, like Kiara, am seemingly from a family where I have the this privilege at my hands with the notion of knowing that it doesn't belong to me, you know, like I, 
I feel like I had to do so much self exploration of like, where do I actually fit in versus where do my parents fit in and where does my family fit in? And I feel like I gained a lot of strength realizing like my individual self in this world and separating like that, separating not myself from my family, but like, you know, like. Which is like your identity, right? As an individual. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you do that by having your own opinions and doing like i said what you feel like you connect to connect with and that takes a lot of strength to do mm-hmm. and i feel like that's where kiara draws that from and she is a strong character that definitely has her opinions and is definitely not afraid to share them because i think she thinks she's doing it for the best like i think she wants to like benefit mm-hmm. Other, like other people, I feel like she's doing it with heart, with a lot of heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's not a bystander. No, not at, not at all. And again, I think that's like a huge, it's a huge credit to your writers and a huge credit to you uh, in the way that you brought the character to life because it's, it's such a nice, as a female, it's such a nice representation of like what what a strong, confident woman like, like next to a bunch, like in, in her natural habitat, like not, not a bystander at all. Really, really good way of putting it, Rudy. Um, yeah. Okay, I have one more question for you. Um, maybe I have like a couple for you before we open to the audience. So it's June, it's Pride Month, and Madison, I know you're super open about everything. Um, I'm curious to know, um, currently, and in the first season, Outer Banks more or less portrays these sort of like traditional relationships and traditional characters. Um, do you think that there's any chance that we'll see like the addition of or the development of characters who maybe don't identify as straight and or cisgender? Um, I don't write this show, so I, I don't know personally, but I mean, we can hope, you know what I'm saying? Like, statistically speaking, there's like, so it's one of us, it's somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, Cool. Okay, Rudy. Mm-hmm. So we did some we did some digging on you, and we found that you starred in a 2017 short film called 1147. And what's okay. interesting is that it drew a lot of parallels to to Outer Banks. At least your character did, because it's about a teenager who's dealing with an abusive father, an alcoholic father. Um, and we would I would love to know like where these are. This is heavy stuff. Like where do you find the strength to 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 play these characters that are so unbelievably important to, to be shown on, on programs? So to answer that question, I need to be very, very respectful and say, obviously I'm not gonna share who, um, but oh. I grew up with, you know, not my family, but I've, I have friends and, um, you know, I also have a lot of movies. I have actor, fellow actors that I've, always looked up to that have gone through the kind of similar hardships and I, they made me believe it. And then when I saw it in my actual life, I was like, holy cow, you can see the parallels between what, you know, the people I know are feeling and what the people in the movies and TV shows and how they're feeling and seeing that comparison. um, That's, I think how I was able to, you know, find those really, really dark places in a, in a home, in a family home. And uh, also to yourself, seeing how much pain, uh, you know, your friends or, or people that you know are going through, yeah. being like, it's my responsibility to not half-ass this and not do the work. So um, yeah, you 100% need to go all the way in because, and I'm not saying that there's any other topic that you shouldn't go 100% um and, but um i'd say that's that's how i did it that's super powerful stuff and i think that's a, it's a huge credit to you because i think uh i've heard lots and lots and lots of people you know kind of talk about how it, i mean all of the characters are very multi-dimensional but i think jj especially kind of has these layers and you did a really nice job of of bringing those to life and definitely not half-assing it for sure sold it in well done 
Um, you actually answered my second question, which was like, did you do any kind of research or self-education on this? But it sounds like you were able to draw from a really personal place. And that, I would imagine, made your performance even more real and more powerful. Mm. Um, so this is not about Outer Banks, but we read that you're going to be starring in a new movie as the main character. It's called Space Waves. Can you tell us about that? Google. Let me just shout out to Google right now. Space Waves was shot before Outer Banks. Oh. And uh, it was done at, at, with some amazingly kind people and some amazing young film creators. Um, that's kind of my thing. I always love like, just like when I see another film creator or actor or anything, I always am like, I was there. I have been in those shoes of, I want to create something. And so when I find those people um, that really, like really want to give this their shot. I mean, these 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 are young film creators that make base waves, and it was shot before Outer Banks. And actually, it took I think two years for them to shoot half of it, find the funding again, and then finish it. And I was just like, y y we can pull it off. We can pull it off. So I don't know when Space Waves will actually be able to be viewed, um, but it was done uh, before Outer Banks. And uh -huh. uh, that, it was just a fun little, uh, it actually was a student, technically student film. So. Oh, cool. um, okay. So we'll look forward yeah. to that one whenever, yeah. whenever it happens. That's cool. Yeah. I know that you're, you're super involved with that kind of thing. Just like young kind of new creatives coming to the light and, and putting new stuff out there. Creative minds and creative minds. And like, who am I to say that? I isn't worth that, you know, like worth their talent. Um, so I'm always like, if I if I know them and if I can participate and have the time, I would love to. Um, I've done several things uh, for some people on out outer banks, um, and they've they've committed to this industry, and I see it uh, every single day uh, how they have changed. And um, uh, yeah, I think that's amazing. I think it's so cool that in this industry, people can help out each other. Uh, so that's why I did yeah, that. Yeah, I think the entertainment industry doesn't always get such a good rep. So it's really cool to hear there's so much like building up of each other that's going on among like your guys' cast in particular and even the crew and, and like the production team and everything. That's really yeah. neat to hear. And I think should be talked about more because that's really special. Um, yeah. Okay, this is my last question then I'm gonna turn it over to the audience. This is deep, are you ready for it? So one of the taglines for Outer Banks, this is really cheesy, but I but I have to ask it because it's too good to pass up. One of the taglines for Outer Banks is careful what you search for. And Google is a search company. Coincidence? Probably not. Um, so question is, is there anything that you are searching for in life? Uh, balance. So hard hitting, so hard hitting. <laughs> okay. It's gonna make me cry. Uh, I'd say balance. Balance between knowing uh, when you're working too hard or when, when you're working too little and knowing that, like, I mean, I'm, in, I'm up in Alaska right now um, and coming from LA uh, with so much action and so much cause to Alaska, which still is a place of cause and change um, and maybe even more so, um, I'm not trying to like <laughs> say it's like awful here, but like, it's like, Hey, you can, you can be a, 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 a symbol of change in this place as just as much as in LA. Uh, and knowing the balance of when you gotta be in LA or here, or, uh, what does it mean to find that equilibrium of like, look at that word. How, how do you like that one? Equilibrium. The equilibrium of like, all right, I'm centered and I can get back to doing the work. I can get back to being with my family and knowing when to do that. Love that, yeah. Great. Well said. Madison, how about you? Um, that's such a deeper question. There's so <laughs> many parts to it. Cause like part of me is just like, I'm searching for like answers slash slash a solution like with everything happening right now every there's so much uncertainty and i'm just like so anxious about the future um so 
Oh, and definitely look like stability in that way of like knowing what's going to happen. Some relief. I hear you. And I mean, that's something that's in a lot of directions right now with the current environment of like what's going on with all of the Black Lives Matter stuff. And then also with like COVID, who, who knows really? And that's a lot of, that's very anxiety inducing. I am right there with you on, on that mental health train. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're going to pull up some questions from our audience now. Um, okay, so we've got a Purva. I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, what was your favorite scene to shoot, guys? I got mine. Mine was Midsummer's. I loved Midsummer's. So Midsummer's, was so Midsummer's was such a um, uh, so many reasons. Uh, first one that comes to mind is. I, I think it was like percent of the cast was there with 200 plus extras. And it was like, it was game day. It was game day, baby. And we were all there like dressed up uh, and we had to like get it done. And it was just so much fun. Yeah. Midsummers was really, really fun. That's also my answer. And it's just, it was so such a good location to film at. And yeah, having pretty much the entire cast there was nice. And so, yeah, it was a, that was a good time. I mean, like the biggest scene that you guys, the biggest in terms of number of people that you guys filmed, mm -hmm. maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, and then there's the movie scene. Ah, yes. That was actually a lot of extras as well. That was a lot of people too, but also the, the boat chasing scene uh, with Nambi and Sarah with all the floodlights and stuff. That was a lot of people. Too. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. But yeah. but Madison got to wear, wear a really pretty dress, and you got to wear a really cool tuxedo in the Midsummer's episode. So I'm with you on that. It's a fun episode. I, I think there's a little Easter egg in there that I want to shout out to Google that I'd like to pick up. Everybody, all like the uh, bus boys are wearing ties, and I I I was like, he doesn't get it right, and he's wearing a but JJ's wearing a bow tie. Um, so that's the little giveaway that he's like not supposed to be there. So. Uh, that's a little Easter egg there. Thanks for letting us in on the secret. Um, all right, who we have next? Judith, um, what is your opinion on the portrayal of different body types as teenagers on the show and potential for season two? Um, it's something mm. I've definitely thought about a lot when in times where it's like, I'm on a show where I'm in a bikini a lot of it and I go back and forth on like do I need to crash diet and xyz or should I just like come as I am and I think it's definitely something I went back and forth with a lot and I'm still yeah. trying to find some type of like comfort in just being like this is my body right now like take it or leave it <laughs> um but Definitely I need to broaden some rep representation there, but everybody is beautiful. You're always bikini ready. I tweet, I was tweeting the other day and I was like, I just gained, gained eight pounds during quarantine and I'm <laughs> trying to convince myself to love it. And, you know, so I want everybody to feel empowered when they watch the show and feel confident and know that, you know, you don't have to look any certain type of way and including and like including that and uh, just as much as you know sexual orientation season two i think that's also a good point of like yeah. another verse you know uh not everybody has the same type of body and bringing that to the show as well so i think the writers are aware of that um and i sure hope fingers crossed like we like we said we're not the writers but they bring sexual orientation into it and then also you know uh body body types for sure. And I think um, Netflix as a whole does a really nice job. Um, I think like covering covering the spectrum of like varying everything, if, if you know what I mean. So I would imagine that that um, and your guys' writers are so good. And so they're, they're they seem very inclusive with the stuff that they've already written about. So I'm excited to see what comes down the pipe for season two. Me too. All right. What else we got? Tyler, since the show, what is it like blowing up overnight via Instagram and all? And, they, and he wants to know when season two begins shooting. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, go for it, Bailey. Right. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. What's it like blowing up overnight? Um, it was really, really freaking exciting to me anyway. I was like, oh my God, it's like all of these like cool people interacting with me. And there's like, I crave that energy of like interaction from so many people. And I feel like I have that now and I can just like go on Twitter and have a conversation with whoever I feel like having a conversation with. Um, so it's definitely like made me more social and in that way. Um, and season two, we don't know about season two yet, guys. Stop. We're all heartbroken about that. We would love it to happen sooner rather than later. <laughs> I'm sure you guys would too. Yeah, we would. This we would. state of everything in the world right now. I'm sure it's just like a matter of figuring that out. But how many, people, really we have, how many people does it in total are there that work on this thing? Because we just need to get to that phase so you guys can start filming again. <laughs> I agree. I, I, yeah, fingers crossed. And hopefully. 2020. That's just hopefully 2020. Yeah. And Rudy, what about you? What was your reaction to kind of blowing up overnight? Uh, pressure. I felt a lot of pressure. You know, you feel a lot of like, all right, what does this mean in terms of, well, what should I say? Uh, do I have to say? Do I have to filter myself? And the answer is yes, you do. And because, like I said, people look up to you. People look up to you, and you need to think twice and be like, who am I not? Who am I excluding? Um, or like, where do you want to stand, uh, is also very important on that. So pressure on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's what I would say. Great power and great responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else we got. Scott, <laughs> did you encounter any gators when you were shooting? We did. Uh, there were some gators, there were some snakes. I think there was like a moment where they were like, snake on set. And then we were like, what? And then we like, everybody paused and we found the snake and then it was, we went back to shooting. Um, I, in terms of gators, there were some, there was like some at Midsummer. Yeah. You weren't aware of this? It's probably good. Like, the way that her face happened while you were talking, it does not appear that she, was, she thinks was it was like, as real as you thought it was, Rudy. <laughs> It was either something, it either happened when I wasn't on set or everybody was like, nobody tell Maddie that they're <laughs> I would been right there with you. Honestly, snakes are worse than gators, in my opinion. Yeah, there were some snakes on set for sure. At Barry's, at Barry's yes. trailer, there were some snakes for sure. Oh, mm -hmm. All right, I think we've got time for one more question. Julia. After a long day of filming, what do you guys like to do? Do you all hang out outside of the studio? After a long day of shooting, yeah. We are like, what are we doing? What's the deal? And we, sometimes that just meant going into the apartment and playing video games. Sometimes that meant going to the beach. Sometimes that meant going to the, breaking into the pool at night. You know, like, like there is all this. Maybe I shouldn't put that on Google, but like, that's what we did. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah, we always were like, what's the deal tonight? What, what, what's going down? Yeah. Um, it, it was either going home and being like, first of all, shower. After any given day, shower. It was like, there's like a layer of bug spray, sweat, dirt. It was, it was a whole thing. It's like, shower first, and then head over to the boys' house and play Mario Kart. <laughs> yes, Mario Kart. Okay, well, that, now this is the question. Who's your go-to Mario Kart character? Toad. I'm a okay. Toad player. Who are you? Um, I don't have a favorite. You're the flexible person who will, like, take whatever is left? No. I'm like, I don't want to say Peach, but... <laughs> You own it. He's a princess. Don't worry. You know I what I'm saying? Play, I think that's why you play Yoshi. Yoshi? I like Yoshi. There it is. I love me some Yoshi, too. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to chat with us. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, we will look forward to hopefully hosting you guys in a Google office in person in the near future. So thanks so much. And enjoy the rest of your quarantine. Thank you so much for having us.
Bye-bye.